Hey guys, how's it going? So a couple of things today. First off, I wanted to give you an update on these containers that we cut back exactly two weeks ago today. We're gonna go cut back four more on the other side of the property, and then we're gonna do a little bit of harvesting. First of all, look at these containers. Oh my goodness. So two weeks ago, hacked them back at least two thirds of the way. I mean, I think these super tunias were almost to the ground. Sweet potato vine was hitting the ground. I'm gonna trim those back up today because they're just growing so fast but I am so pleased with the comeback here. Let's take a look all the way around and pretty much every container looks exactly the same. Now I am noticing after the cutback that we're seeing more supertunia growth than superbina growth. Although I can see some of the foliage right here and it looks like we're starting to put on some buds for some more flowers. So that one may just take a little bit longer to recuperate after a trim like that than the supertunias. But I mean, overall, my goodness. Oh, what a success. And not everything is a success. So I'm always super happy when we do something so severe like that to be able to show you guys what it looks like a little bit later on. So I do have my pruners here. We're gonna take after the sweet potato vine again because I don't really want this. I don't really want it going all over the ground. So I'm gonna go in and take it back about to where the super tunias are. And you know what? It looks like there's more superbina in this container than the other one. You know, everyone's just a tiny little bit different, but oh so pretty we did put some extra slow release fertilizer in at the time that we cut them back i do think that that helped revive them they're still getting their weekly water soluble fertilizer um, so that's always helpful too especially in plants like this that are so productive they're they're very vigorous plants and i think you know talking to some of the growers and things i think that you could probably fertilize them just about every time that you water and they would be happy. I don't think it's 100% necessary, but I think that sometimes the legginess can be due to not having quite enough food when they're such productive plants. Oh, they look so good though. Oh, okay. So this is going to be kind of satisfying. Let's get this all trimmed back and I'm going to kind of indiscriminately go in and just cut. already looking better. You scoot this away so we can see. Oh yeah, that looks good. I'm also going to cut any pieces of grass that have come out, any little stems that make it look a little wild. There we go, that cleans it up too. Okay, so let's finish trimming up the sweet potato vine on these containers and then we're gonna head over to the west side and we are gonna clip back all the plants that are in those urns because they need it desperately. I probably should have done them the same day I did these. Get out of the way quick. <laughs> Bye. Brandon from Eco Lake and Chris Schreiner from uh, Green Source Landscaping were, are both here this morning. Brandon's just leaving. Uh, they were just gathering up the last, like the holding tanks. Brandon brought those over for the water lilies that we put in the pond um, and the other pond plants. So anyway, they're just here checking up on things and oh my goodness. Oh, I love that new pond, but these pots, you guys, they look so good. We're going to do a drive-by tour. So this one clearly doesn't get as much light. It's right underneath the canopy of the mulberry tree, but it's still hanging in there. But they just look so much more tidy. Oh, they look good. Kind of see down the lane here. Oh, yeah. Look at those. That refreshed him again. I love being able to see the container. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to the west side uh, urns and I'll show you what those look like. I just figured that even though, you know, we're doing the cutback on these a little bit later, it's still uh, early enough in the season that we, I mean, we still have, let's see, August, September, 
most of October. We still have like two and a half, three months to enjoy these containers. So even if we forfeit a couple of weeks on these to get them looking better, I think it's worth it. Oh, I need the slow release fertilizer and I need to grease these brakes. I think this is a huge help uh, when we're doing the cutback, but this is all we took off of the east side pots. Not, not too much. Okay, here we are on the west side. A lot really needs to be cut back in this area. I need to come in and clean up the ladies mantle, deadhead roses, and so on and so forth. The asters are looking really good though. And these pots, you can see, you know, like right in here how like not full this plant is. It looks a little bit stressed. This is probably the best looking one though. Let me go down the lane here. Look at that one. Ooh. It needs some help. A lot of uh, leafy stuff shining. I, I actually stopped last night because the way it looked, it kind of had a dry appearance to it. Like maybe I needed to come in and water. I just think these plants need to be refreshed. The uh, Bordeaux in particular. And this may be the worst one right here. But we are gonna revive these pots. Yeah, see, doesn't that plant look like it's dry? Like it needs to be watered? <laughs> and it doesn't, it's not wilted in the slightest. It's just super stressed. So we're gonna come in and I'm just going to, we're going to sacrifice flowers just like we did on the east side, but I think it's actually gonna make it look better even today. That actually looks a little bit better to me than having that gross looking plant hanging down from the pot. So anyway, we're just gonna carry on. I'm gonna do the same thing with all the Superbina too and probably just bring them up flush with the edge of the container here just so we've got a nice uniform kind of tidy look. Love to see those urns anyway. Then I will apply the slow release fertilizer and that'll be it for these. This'll just take a few minutes. Then we're gonna head out to our onions out on the by the high tunnel and we'll get, get those harvested. a bunch of mangy growth and while it is sort of hard to look at containers after you've you know done done the job <laughs> they look a little sad the payoff is going to be so much greater you know looking at them like this for a couple of weeks as they start to recharge we just know that they will have so much more energy going forward for the rest of the season and we are getting to a point like you can see some of these are in the sun right now but you know in the afternoon they're protected by this wall of north poles which are looking phenomenal at the moment this one has a little bit of color but see how this one is in more shade in the morning two of them get a little bit more sun and two of them get a little bit more shade which can be part of the problem too if they're not getting enough sun throughout the day they will start to look a little stringy and that's the thing too you know this area has evolved so much i don't know if you remember what it used to look like a little strip of grass uh, that was blocked off from the driveway by a little fence and there was a couple of ailing uh, globe willows in this space so we took the fence out took the grass out took the willows out and <laughs> planted this whole thing up and i love how it's turned out with these red point maples they are growing so, so quickly that, you know, what was once a full sun area. <laughs> the kids and that's Aaron's sister. Anyway, what was once a full sun area, just like our South Garden, it's all full sun, but there are so many trees out there. And once those start putting on growth, then we're going to have to start switching things to more, you know, shade loving or part sun, part shade sort of loving plants. 
the super tunias and super venus that i used in these containers they require full sun and like the more the better to be very productive so that could be part of the issue on this side but you know it's kind of a constant learning i just saw a huge weed for crying out loud look at these in here just sneaking the surefire white begonias while they are nice and uh, kind of peaceful looking they don't have the vigor of the surefire rose, not in my experience so far, but you know, they were a lot smaller when we started off as well. Okay, so those are done, fertilized. We should be good to go, and I will let you guys see what those look like in a couple of weeks as well. We'll report back, and hopefully we have as much success with these as we did with the pots on the east side. So now we're gonna head out to the onions. I already harvested all the onions from our raised bed garden. Uh, so those are done, and those are curing behind the barn, but there's quite a few that are ready out here. You know what, on our way into the onions, I wanna give you a little progress report on the zinnias we planted over here. You know, we've got the Super Tutti Mini Vista Yellow, the Icicles Helichrysum, and the Stormburst Super Bina in here, but look at all of these zinnias in here. We started these all from seed in the greenhouse, and then Benjamin and I came out here not long ago, and we popped them in the ground, and they're starting to bloom. Oh, it looks so pretty, I love this color combo too you can see all the colors all in one one area here that icy blue with the, the lavender flower the soft yellow and that salmon color anyway super happy with those you can see them all throughout these over here get quite a lot more sun and they stop right here by the russian sage looking great okay so here are the onions the first section here are the candy onions most of which are ready to harvest you can tell because the uh, tops have started to flop and I'm thankful that they haven't started to bolt. So nice. Some years, if the weather's just right, they'll start to send up that bloom stalk, which kind of, um, it makes it for a, a weird center in your onion and usually you wanna get them harvested right away when they start doing that. Uh, but these are just beautiful. I'm not gonna harvest all of them because some of them are still like going for it. But anything that looks like this, when you see that the, the uh, stalk or the leaves of the onion have softened right here at the neck and flop over, that means that they are ready to go. Look at how beautiful these are. So just a little update here, the candies. Walla Wallas are still growing. You can see that they're still looking pretty good. All the leaves are upright, no bolting, which is great. So we'll leave those as well as the Yellow Sweet Spanish. We've popped a few out here and there to use. We've got some Newberg onions. I'll pop a few of these out. And then we've got all the shallots. We'll pull these out today. And honestly, I think I might've left these go too long. Let's see, where did these even start? I think these are the Ed's Red shallots. Eh, they look good. Holy moly. Look at those. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's a shallot right there. Dang. Quick look at everything else. The potatoes have started to die back, which means they are on their way to being ready to be harvested, and some are even pushing right up out of the ground. Look at this. Take those in today. I don't want to leave those. Oh my, look at that. Oh, don't want to leave those exposed to sunlight. Holy moly. Oh, I think we're gonna have a good harvest this year. If that's any indication right there, that's from one plant and only one side of it. Whoa. Anyway, we've got a whole bunch of those. Sunflowers are looking great. I wanna show you the ones that Sunflower Steve sent out. Sure looking dry. Water's about to turn on. Peppers, we need to harvest those. Crazy amount of peppers here. Look at the bells. Okay. Now, I can't remember the exact names. We might have to put them up on the screen. But I think that these are so beautiful. Are these like the Marley mix? There's also like the Van Gogh. I think they're so, so beautiful. Oh my goodness. You can see all the pollinators. I cut a bunch of these for the tables when the pond crew is here and they lasted. It was 104, 105, 106 the days they were here. So I cut them on Sunday and they lasted all the way through Wednesday outside in those hot temperatures. Like there was a couple that were looking a little tiny bit wilted. 
and I never topped them up with water. They were just amazing. But we've got lots of tomatoes that are ready as well. Lots of beautiful produce out here. Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we just need to get to work so we can get as much of this harvested as possible. I want to take my parents some tomatoes today. Um, you know, their vegetable garden was being worked on at the time when you want to plant these. So they tucked a couple of tomato plants in, in other spots, but nothing, nothing real big. I think they've got a cherry and maybe it's a couple cherry tomatoes. So I want to take them some big slicers some and some heirlooms today. Okay guys, so I'm just gonna start harvesting. When we're all done, we're gonna be taking the onions behind the barn to cure for two to three weeks in the shade. Um, and that's just a process where we leave the leaves and roots on, we let them dry down and they'll draw energy from those leaves and roots. And then we'll clean them up after that point and put them into storage. Uh, storage they like between 32 and 50 degrees, about 60 to 70% humidity. Uh, we put them in our root cellar and they do pretty well. In fact, we are still eating off of last year's onions, which is phenomenal that we made it an entire year from harvest to harvest, still using off of our onions. They've started to sprout, but they're still completely usable. Anyway, let's harvest and then we'll take a look. I did not strip the plants clean, but I think this is quite a number to deal with at the moment. And I didn't pick any of the Bellini tomatoes, which are these right here, and they are really tasty. Really tasty tomatoes. I'll come out and get these later. I ran out of room. I mean, we've got so many shallots, and these are good sized shallots here. That's the Zabrun shallot. I'll get these all laid out so you can see them. And then the candy onions. And then we've got a good amount of tomatoes here, and there are some potatoes at the bottom of that basket as well. But these plants are just absolutely loaded loaded up with tomatoes. We're gonna have so many to harvest. And these romas too, look at these. I mean, they're just absolutely loaded. There's um, bindweed as well growing. You can see it blooming there. It's really not hurting anything though. We haven't worried too much about the weeds just as a whole. And I think for me, tomatoes just perform the best and produce the most when I just leave them alone. Give them space to grow and let them go for it. Oh, what's in here? Have we got a roma ready? Oh ho ho, look at that. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of romas ready actually on the interior of the plant, so I'm just gonna have to come back out later with more baskets. Let's get these in the shade. Thank you. 
I can't believe this is just a fraction of our harvest right here. <laughs> There's so many onions. And you know, Chris, who was here working on the pond, I sent him home with a big bunch of onions and tomatoes and peppers. So right here, this little batch right here are the Newberg onions. So all of these I grew from seed. We started these, oh, when was it? Like February maybe from seed in the greenhouse over there. Um, and then we planted them out. And it's just so satisfying when you can take something from a tiny little seed and you know get something so wonderful from it. So the Newberg onions, this is my first time ever growing this variety. And uh, we had a little bit of water issues and that could be why they're sized a little smaller or maybe it's just a smaller onion than I'm used to. Um, but it's kind of nice to have some smaller ones because sometimes for a recipe, you don't need a big gigantic onion. You only need, you know, a quarter of a cup or half a cup or whatever the case may be. So this section here are the Newbergs that came from the raised beds, minus some that I gave away. And then we've got the uh, Zabrun shallot. Uh-oh, it's gonna get a little loud for a minute. That right there is what keeps our root cellar nice and cool. Anyway, I thought that these were a really interesting shape and they're enormous. I can feel like there's a, a separation here that this one will come apart into two. Uh, look at these though. So these are more long, like elongated, and they're nice and firm. Uh, versus over here we have the Ed's Red Shallot, which this is what I'm a little bit more used to. Uh, most of these will come apart into multiple pieces. In fact, I popped a couple apart, like right here. See that huge shallot? This one here, these were together, like so. And they smell so good, you guys. You know, shallots are kind of more mild. And oh, I'm so excited to have these. And then this right here is part of the crop of candy onions, which is a high sugar content onion, just like the Walla Wallas that we grow every year. And I've got the yellow sweets out there too. The yellow sweet Spanish Utah, I think is what they're called. And uh, usually the higher sugar content onions don't store as long, but that's what we're still eating off of from the root cellar. Um, so I think as long as you've got them stored at that low temperature, which usually, we keep our root cellar between 40 and 45. It gets a little bit cooler in the wintertime just naturally on its own. So I actually keep a little floor heater on there that I've got it set to where if it's gonna freeze, it'll kick on and just take the edge off. Uh, but in the summertime, I keep it right about 45 in there. And it's nice because we kind of use it as a refrigerator for everybody out here. You know, we have, uh, there's waters and drinks and snacks and stuff in there um, and it keeps them nice and cool. Uh, Anyway, if you don't have like ideal onion storage temperatures, which, you know, I used to not have that either. I would just pop them out in my garage, which stayed naturally a little bit cooler. And I just would try to get through them as quickly as I could. And then I would give away uh, some as well. I kind of tried to average how many onions I thought we would use uh, based on the shelf life of the onion. And I would just keep that many. So if that makes sense. And then here are a few of the potatoes I just grabbed because they were, you know, popping up out of the soil surface. We've got some purple Vikings, which this is always such a good variety. They're always nice sized tubers. We've got purple skin, look at this. It's not even like it's almost cured. I can't rough that skin up with my, well, I roughed it up right there, didn't I? Yeah, this needs a little more curing time, but not like usual. And then we have a few little reds here that were popping up out of the ground. So I've got actually on my meal plan for the week, we're gonna have some mashed potatoes. So this will be perfect. And then these tomatoes, I'm gonna take out to my parents' house tonight. And these tomatoes will keep here. Um, this is a weird one. <laughs> I don't, it's like all the different stages of ripeness all in one. That's when, is it called cat eye? Is that what it's called? When you've got fl the flower that's like really odd shaped and it creates this like super odd shaped tomato. Anyway, I'm real happy with the tomatoes this year. I picked some beautiful pineapple tomatoes yesterday, three great big giant ones, uh, and a bunch of other ones from our raised beds, you know, cause I grew four tomatoes up here closer to the house. Uh, and then all the ones we were just standing out by today. And then I think I already mentioned, but these are gonna sit out here for two to three weeks and cure dry. I've done it in the barn before. I've done it out here. Uh, this is on the north side of the building, so they'll stay in the shade. I did run out of table space, so there's a few down here. Now, typically I can get away with this outside because we are so dry here. I did see one day with possible rain on the forecast. So if that does arrive, I'm just gonna run out here and just throw a tarp over them just to keep them dry. And that's the main thing. You wanna keep them in a dry spot that's a little bit cooler than you know out in your garden, but not too cool. You want it to be warm enough to where they have a chance to dry down real well. And then at the end of our two weeks here, we'll come in, trim all the roots off, trim the leaves off, you know, just like right up above the bulb. Some of them will be able to separate. That's beauty right there. 
and then they'll go into baskets in the root cellar. And you guys, that is it for today. Kind of a couple random things that I wanted to take care of. That's probably what it's gonna be for the next week or so. You know, I had to kind of ignore things while the pond project was going on happily happily ignore everything else while that was going in. So I just want to go around and kind of take care of a few things that um, need to be taken care of, some cutting back, some harvesting, and uh, all of that business. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching the video today. I hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you in the next one. Bye.